Good afternoon, everyone. This meeting of the Monroe County Election Board is called to order. Uh, if I could have TSD put the chat feature on Zoom so we can see that. Thank you. I appreciate that to see who's in the virtual space. Um, we, uh, I'll ask uh, Kylie if you can call the roll for us. Nicole Brown. Present. David Henry. Present. Judith Bengart. Present. All right, a, a quorum having been established, we'll move on to the order of business today. Uh, first is the approval of minutes from the uh, last meeting. Um, I believe we have minutes from the last meeting, is that correct? I believe we do. Yes, we do. I have read them. I had no objections to what I was able to read. Okay. Uh, Ms. Benkart, any additions or amendments to the minutes? No. Okay. I will make a motion that we approve the minutes for the last election board meeting. I second. All right, a motion to approve the minutes and second having been made. Uh, Kylie, if you'll go ahead and call the roll to approve the minutes, please. Nicole Brown? Yes. David Henry? Yes. Judith Benkart? Yes. All right, very good. On to the clerk's update. Clerk Brown? What's new this month? Oh my goodness. Well, let's talk about the fact that we, because we might have been a little busy, we um, have some late CFA for reports. I believe that Ms. Kylie has um, submitted a packet for the board's consideration. And I have been made aware that there is at least one member in the audience who would like to speak to the PAC CFA for. Um, the information that I've received from my office, let's, let's go back to the fact that the deadline to, to file your CFA-4 was October 20th, 2023 at noon. So anyone filing after that would be considered late and the board has previously agreed to a protocol based upon first offense, second offense, um, et cetera. Um, the information regarding candidate Asari is that the information from my office is that this is his first time turning in a late CFA four. My understanding also is that is the same for candidate Oldham who filed on November 6, 2023. And then I do not have that information for the PAC but again, we have someone here who might be able to speak for at least one of those packs. Okay. Um, good there. So at this point in the in your reporting, I guess we'll go bullet by bullet and make and make space for public presentation or comment. Um, so on the first bullet of late CFA dash fours, um, my understanding is that there were candidates that also may or may not have filed a form 11 for the large contribution, uh, the separate form on the CFA. So you, you'd file on the CFA that you had the contribution that was over $1,000 in the certain window. I believe ESOX has that outlined there, um, but, but it also requires that second form 11. Um, had the, I know that that's not what we're talking about here, CFA fours versus the form 11, but was there any uh, additional uh, scrutiny or oversight on the CFAs if there was a, a need to have a large contribution form filed. Does anyone know that? We can get that information for you. I am aware that there was a large contribution. Um, we do not have that candidate packet okay. here with us. So I think for, so what I would recommend if we go line by line on these. So for uh, Mr. Asari's um, is to verify a, if a form 11 was required for a large contribution on the CFA. And then the second question we'd want to resolve, I think by the next board meeting is, um, does that constitute one or two filings, right? Because if you didn't do the second piece of that, is that two or one? Do you follow what I'm saying? Yeah, I do follow what yeah. you're saying and what a nice position to be in. You might have had a large contribution. So, yeah. so um, what may I recommend that we invite him to the January meeting yeah. um, where he could answer? I mean, we will certainly look and see if those are there and have his candidate packet available for the board's review. 
So that's fine. I would just motion we table this particular one until sure. next month uh, with a little additional information done uh, to identify if uh, that Form 11 needed to be filed on his particular CFA. So I'll make a motion to table uh, these Akasaris until next month until we have more information. I second. Okay. A motion second being made. Uh, we'll go ahead and Kylie just call the roll on that. Nicole Brown. Yes. David Henry. Yes. Judith Benkart. Yes. Okay. So motion to table has been uh, approved for next month until we get just a little more on that one. Um, second is Scott Oldham. Yes. Um, and we think that, and you said that's first offense according to yes. our work. I, I would just read in a, a, a commentary just so folks uh, who are watching at home re remember, recall that this board passed um, guidelines uh, first drafted in November of 2022 and passed in January of this year that it had outlined uh, what the procedure would be for these moving forward. The board didn't really have a policy in place for some time. It had practiced a custom of offenses. And I think you did say this, but just so we all understand that first and second offenses would be uh, a warning, uh, the second offense being a last warning with no penalty. But after the third offense and additional offenses, the board had committed itself to issuing for a third offense a 25% of the statutorily defined penalty, uh, which would be up to $250. And then additional offenses beyond the third would be a 100% of the statutorily defined penalty, which would be $1,000. And so that, that the board has that as policy, and that's what we're, what's guiding our discussion. Uh, would you agree that that's I would agree are? with that. Yeah. There was a fine balance, if you recall, yeah. between not wanting to discourage candidates from running but also wanting candidates to take seriously the importance of having your CFA force filed in a timely manner. Okay, well having said all that, uh, for Mr. Oldham's first offense, uh, is there a motion to, uh, to make a decision to notice him of his warning or, or I'll look, entertain motions at this point for Mr. Oldham? I will make a motion recommending a warning and because this is his first offense, excuse me. Oh, that's okay. I interrupted you and I apologize. Um, and there isn't any question that he doesn't need a CFA 11. Is that correct? I don't believe so based on that CFA, but in short, when we, I think when we surface a late CFA, we should be looking to see if there are large contributions on that that also need scrutiny. Uh, so I mean, we can easily look at his, but I, I don't think that his had that um, to my understanding. Okay. Well, if it's not there, then I have no problem with um, approving it. And uh, that he just get a warning. Okay. So was that the motion and second? Yes. Okay. <laughs> a motion and second having been made to send the first offense warning to Mr. Oldham. Um, we'll go ahead and call the roll. Nicole Brown? Yes. David Henry? Yes. Judith Benkart? Yes. All right. So ordered. Uh, next on the list of CFAs to review is the Political Action Committee, yes, for MCCSC. We do have someone in the audience that would like to speak to uh, the conditions uh, and the circumstances by which the PAC had not filed on time. Sir, if you want to take the podium and read your name into the record uh, so we have that. Thank you. Is there a button to press for green light? There should be a little button. Let me try, uh, sweetheart. Yeah, me... Okay. There oh, we go. Thank you. Um, sorry about that. Uh, John Kenny, representing the MCCSC-2022 and in lieu of the treasurer not being able to attend. Um, yeah, I think I had heard that she had already communicated, but if I repeat to my guest that she was new to the treasurer position early this year as a changeover from the previous PAC. Um, so she was learning on the fly of the uh, directions. Um, we were working to contact the representative here, but there was a turnover in that position with a voicemail, et cetera, neither here nor there. She was able to submit uh, what she thought were correct reports. Um, there was never any indication of problems with the report until hearing from a Mr. Henry. Uh, as soon as she heard from him, she amended the reports and the missing reports and everything is filed and correct as we understand it at this, or as she understands it at this point. Um, and I'm appearing because she had a commitment she couldn't get out. Thank you. 
so just, uh, and I, I'm happy to open this up to questions from the board. So to be clear, um, the, there was a transition in treasurers. Uh, when, when did y'all, when did that happen in terms of I, who's? I believe the last treasurer was required to either announce or maybe had some time after, but as of 1231, and a new treasurer was appointed, uh, I'd have to look at notes, okay. but uh, sometime in maybe February, okay. March. All right, so, so we had a new treasurer transition in, um, and you know, for, for just the awareness of the public, you know, when we have PACs, you know, we don't, that we don't have the political parties engaged in a nonpartisan PAC or bipartisan nonpartisan PAC. So your your options are to call, of course, the election board for assistance with information on how to file or, or That's the, my understanding, or the, yeah. the or the, the state election division to gain, gain some guidance there. Uh, do you know uh, if Dr. Rue had said if they had um, if there'd been attempts to talk to either the local or state board for assistance at all as you were working through paperwork? I'm sorry, I didn't you, hear. Was there any attempt by the PAC to contact the state election division for guidance on filing paperwork at all in the year or two? I'm not all? sure. You don't know? No. Okay. Um, okay. Um, and so, so we had the late filing, and I guess, uh, Clerk Brown, if you could help me uh, just uh, revise here. Are we, which filings are we talking about uh, for that is, are there multiple filings here we're talking about? For MCCSC? Yeah, for MCCSC. I am not aware of multiple, just okay. the PAC form, or the, the PAC filing. Okay. We might want to ask Kylie. There are two filings. Um, it would be the pre-election and the pre-primary that they were missed the deadlines on. Okay, so one pre-election, one pre-primary. Correct. And, and as of today, we're all filed correctly. Like they we were all filed correctly as of October 30th. Right. No, 24th. Um, Clerk Brown, do you have questions? I do not. None. Uh, Ms. Benkart, do you have questions? No. Okay. Uh, I, thank you. I, I think for the clarification, I, yeah, obviously, you know, transitions of, of, of leadership are difficult. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about, um, I guess, the future of the PAC? Uh, the, the PAC kind of, it stood up when we were, there were periods of referendum. Obviously, we yes. had a PAC for the previous referendum just a year ago. We had this recent PAC. Do, can you give us any sense of what the future of this PAC is? Or is are you looking to I, close again, it? I'm not in any leadership position of the okay. PAC, but the little I've heard is that those decisions are being made right now about how to either redistribute the little bit of money that's remaining and will show up in the fourth quarter report or some, some transition when they do the December 31st report. I'm sure a decision will be made as to, I think there's one more invoice due I heard or something like that. Yeah. And at that point you'd have a balance and follow state rules for distribution or something. Yeah. It seems that past practice has been once a referendum period's over and the bills are settled, the PAC dissolves and then reconstitutes. I mean, because I think 2011 was one version of that. Yeah. And then 2011 we had one last and 17, year. but this one, they, they sort of thought of it as a two year PAC. I do know that, okay. but at this point, I think it would follow the 2011 or 2017 model and dissolve. That's my understanding at this time. Clerk Brown, do you have additional comment? Well, so because I have an incredible team, even in real time, they wanna help me. So what I understand, and you may have said this, uh, but I was checking this. Yes, for MCCSC filed a CFA for, for the outgoing treasurer on January 27th. Can you repeat that please? Okay. <laughs> the information I have is that Yes, for MCCSC, they filed a CFA-4 for the outgoing treasurer on January 27th. Of this year? Of this year. Okay. 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 Um, so I suppose the question I have for everyone is, uh, are, are we treating the two filings as two missed offenses or is it one offense? Um, I will recommend that we treat it as one offense. Um, we clearly are, I'm finding out today, we're finding out today that there was a pre-primary -pri pre filing missed. Um, it certainly stands to reason that you assume a new role, you wouldn't know all there is to know. I, I think 
to give them the benefit of the doubt. We should treat it as one. Is that consistent with law? Do we know? Uh, Judge Meckert, I, I don't know if you've looked into this or I, I, we said Molly was, I don't know if she's on today or not. I just want to make she sure was, we don't. She was, she was on as a panelist. She was, but she's not anymore. I don't oh. Oh, I am. Oh, uh, Ms. Turner oh. King, thank you. Yeah, the question before us uh, if, is uh, if under code we can treat two separate CFA filing documents as one offense for the purposes of this discussion or if those are considered separate offenses. Separate I can look filings. up the code right now. I don't know off the top of my head and I'll... I, I, you're looking at code right now. Okay. I, I think what we'll do there is, is hold. I don't, sir, I don't want to keep you standing at the podium the whole time. I, I think, I, are there other questions for Mr. Kenny? Not from okay. me. No. I, I, thank you for that feedback. Or we'll, we're going to deliberate a little bit here as we get some uh, legal guidance on that. But I, again, thank you for coming in. Um, it does strike me that, um, you know, as we're sorting through this, that if a PAC dissolves and then comes back, you know, for a referendum five years from now, that I, I'm, I, I'm kind of curious now if that resets the offense clock as a new PAC, even though it's, so there's some, there's some even ambiguity in the policy we passed. I mean, if you close this PAC and then open it in five years, um, does, does that clock keep ticking for that, that new constitution of it or not? And that's like probably a later down the road question. But I think that yeah. would be, especially coming in handy as uh, we prepare for the election administration conference to um, have hmm. the, Indiana Election Division to be able to speak with them directly. And so if we're concerned, maybe we can table this one until we can specifically ask okay. Mr. Kochivar or Ms. Um, oh, her name escapes me. Well, our side, Ms. Nussmeyer or Mr. King on the other side. Right, yeah. but they have an attorney too. Um, Mr. King has an attorney. Mr. Kochivar is. That's your side. Mm -hmm. Who do you talk to? Valerie. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Ms. Valerie. Yeah, right. Oh, my goodness. Your name. Um, I'm so sorry. Well, we, we, yeah, I mean, I'm given the interest of time and it may take a while mm -hmm. to sort through this. I'm happy to table the MCCSC um, uh, adjudication until we have a little more clarity on code as to whether or not we can treat that as one or two offenses, and I guess also um, if uh, if the PAC were to disband and, and reconstitute down the road, do we continue the, um, the, the offense schema for them or do they start over basically? So uh, I'll make a motion to table a discussion on this particular filing today until we get a few more answers from our legal department. I will, I will second. The motion having been made and seconded, uh, Kylie, can you take the roll please? Nicole Brown? Yes. David Henry? Yes. Judith Finkart? Yes. All right, fourth on uh, Clerk Brown's uh, list here is the Bloomington Dissonant Democrats who had a filing status of October 30. Is that right? Bear with me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't see a lot of this until just before the meeting. That's right. I believe that is the Second offense for that pack is that correct? Because I think we've been down this before in my time <laughs> in, in the chair. Hmm. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, it, I, I think as it is a second offense, I, I mean, I'm happy to just take the motion to make the second offense um, notice here. Um, and issue the last warning to that pack. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm happy to entertain that motion. I will make a motion to recommend the last warning for the Bloomington dissident Democrats. Is there a second? second. Motion and second having been made. Uh, Kylie, please take the roll. Nicole Brown. Yes. David Henry. Yes. Judith Bankart. Yes. All right. So moved and uh, we'll issue the warning. I would just say um, for those, when we get into the discussion of PACs that, that we really do uh, need to emphasize that if you're no longer functioning as a PAC in the community, if you're not engaged in that space anymore, that it makes sense to disband. Uh, so, um, yeah, and that paperwork has to be done, otherwise you're still on the bubble to file in, sure. at the end of the year. But so if you, if you yeah. know you're going to do it again. Then file your paperwork. <laughs> right? Sure, right? sure. Yeah. Okay, uh, Clerk Brown, is that all of our CFAs for today? I believe so. Okay, and uh, all right, good, okay. 
Other, other reports, other updates? Absolutely. Um, the board will recall that we met 10 days after the election with respect to 15 provisional ballots. Um, provisional ballots are, for whatever reason, typically it's you don't have an ID or you've moved and you're in the wrong precinct or some reason that you're issued, you're not issued a regular ballot and then you have 10 days to cure the issue that was the reason that you vote provisionally. Voters leave with an understanding of what they need to do in those 10 days. So if you forgot your ID, you show up at Election Central and let us make a copy of your ID that's given to the board and then that ballot is counted. If you, if there's a, an issue surrounding your address, you might bring a Duke Energy bill to prove that you do live there, you've got a bill in your name and that helps you to cure or any, any type of error. Anyway, we had 15 provisional ballots and um, I'll, for the board's edif edification, I'll remind you that what we agreed to was to accept five of those and to reject 10 of those. Um, so five more ballots were able to be counted into the totals that we received for the um, 2023 municipal election. And unless you have questions about that, I will go on to the next thing. No questions, sounds great. No questions. Okay. Um, we call the next one election by the numbers and these have already been reported out, but just for those who may not um, keep up with the news regularly, um, we had 77,597 registered voters who were eligible. I want to differentiate that from the total numbers of voters in Monroe County, but between the being able to vote on the referendum and living within the city limits of Bloomington, there were 77,597 people who could partake in the 2023 municipal. And of those eligible voters, 10,441 voted. Now, my math is not always the greatest, but I did a little percentage thing before I stepped in here today. And to me, that equates to 13.46% of the number of eligible voters took advantage. Um, many people stayed out. That, that's unfortunate when you think about, you know, how much money it costs to put on an election. Uh, but we appreciate those who did. This is also, um, I, I want to take advantage of every opportunity to thank our poll workers who did show up. We, um, it, it was hard work to get uh, those poll workers to come out. Many people, everybody's excited about a presidential election, but for a municipal people think, ah, catch me next year. And um, so I wanna thank any and everyone who helped us with this election. I'm incredibly, grateful. And those are mine. And I'm going to ask Ms. Kylie to finish up the uh, recap. So then um, another thing that we have been working on is the poll worker surveys. And this is from Ashley. We sent out 131 surveys and have received back a total of 55 as of today. Most of the workers want to return to work future elections, saying election day ran smoothly given the short, shortage of workers. They were impressed with how well Election Central was able to quickly answer any questions they had, making them comfortable with opening the polls and wanting to come back to work another election. A lot of people have mentioned that they are skeptical, skeptical about how smoothly the 2024 election will run uh, given the concerns with having the proper coverage at each poll. Um, that was for that. And then Vote Center Committee will be meeting tonight at five o'clock and we are ready for them. Okay. Uh, questions from the board, uh, Ms. Bankart? No. Um, thanks for the update. That's really You're good. Um, I would like to say a few things. Uh, first is on the poll worker survey, um, has the board ever been given the raw data from that survey, the actual like Excel sheet of all the respondents and all the all the data to take a look at before? So we we typically um, 
don't provide raw data, raw data, <laughs> raw data, data. We just kind of do a synopsis, um, as she's indicated, most people want to return. What I ask for in the office is if somebody had an especially negative experience, I want to call those people personally mm -hmm. to understand better what might have happened. Um, we did not really have overwhelmingly negative response. I did call one person um, who actually offered to come and meet with us and give us some feedback on things that they see in the in real time that might help us give us some feedback and we have scheduled a meeting with them for after the conference to get their, their feedback. Um, there were some inspectors who um, were not, were displeased because they had to step into other roles because we did run short with not being able to get a lot of poll workers. Um, I'll gently remind inspectors that that's why we pay you a little bit more than we pay other poll workers because you may have to step into a role. Um, unfortunately, somebody told me they thought they should get double the pay because they did uh, two times, you know, they filled two roles. That's not really how it works, but that is why you get that a little bit more than you get, um, than, than others get. Conversely, I had some people who came on in a lower role, stepped up into a higher role, and you know, that, that, is, that takes, um, that we appreciate that is what I am trying to get at very inarticulately. We appreciate that because you signed on to do one job, you stepped up to do another. We're very, very grateful um, for your help in that. And as I said, um, I believe this will look different in 2024. College students will be here and want to participate in the presidential. Um, don't forget that we can use our 16 and 17 year olds and people get excited as we look to change at the top of the ticket. But yeah, I saw the look. So no, almost no, no, we're good. No, I, I no, no raw data for you. Judith, do you have any additional questions? Uh, no, but it would be nice to be able to see raw data. Yeah, I think, yeah. Because I think where we are is um, that's a lot of good material that you just shared. It, it's just not written anywhere. And so yeah, and having asked, you know, I, I, we got a little more information beyond the paragraph, which is a really good summary. Um, so I'm, I'm thinking that, you know, revisiting the conversation we had on the board last month, that um, you know, a, a sort of an after action reportage would, would give us a little more to work with um, where we could take a look at that Excel sheet of data, which I presume comes out of a survey instrument. Uh, or some, however you're capturing it, and actually look at things like a percentage of satisfaction or having those write-ups where we, we can find opportunities to you know, educate the poll workers on the responsibilities that you just did here. Um, but having that um, a little more uh, documented so we could take a look at some of the things on that. Um, I guess the question I have is, A, you know, uh, if, you know A, I'd like to see the data set uh, you know, shared with the board. Um, and B, um, if there's, and I, I appreciate we're, we're, you know, you're working on staffing, if there's an opportunity to maybe put what we just captured here into some narrative that we can actually have a, a document posted that explained or explains some of that. Um, what's the bandwidth of staff right now to produce some additional publication uh, of, of what happened? What do you think? I will certainly work on that for okay. you. And then, um, and Judith, yeah, I think if I just heard you correctly, you'd like to see the raw data too? Yes. Okay. Um, so I guess maybe minimally could, could we um, aim to have that uh, at least given to the board um, next month, at least the data, not necessarily a write-up of the data, but just the data? Sure. Uh, and that'd be fair. Yeah. Um, Kylie, yeah. do you have a comment on that? I can work with Ashley on getting that put together as well with Ryan to make sure that that does get done and then create a spreadsheet for you guys. Yeah, it's all about learning, uh, especially I think we, as you indicated, even in the nice narrative that 2024 is a little daunting. And we definitely, if there's anything that can make it less daunting, <laughs> we want to find it and, and raise it and get into it, I think. Um, that's my view. Um, sorry to opine too long on that. Uh, Judith, do you have additional comment? I just, um, while we're talking about poll workers, is there, uh, where are we on getting the job descriptions for the poll workers? and? Uh, so they have been reviewed by Nicole, and we are working on getting them finalized, and then I will get those back to Nicole for them to be published. Okay. Is there an action of the board required on reviewing those?
this, or is it just your revision and then it gets published? If you would like to review them. Okay. Okay. It's just yeah. I, 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 presuming we'd take us take a look at that. Well, and I'm assuming Molly Turner King is involved with getting those as well. <laughs> okay. Very good. Yes, she will be. Um, and then if they need to be sent to you guys, I can get them sent to you guys as well. Okay. Um, Clerk Brown, does that conclude your report? It does. I would like to add um, a bullet point to the next item of business. Oh, uh, before we get there, there we, we have added public comment after these sections. Is there public comment regarding the clerk's update before you proceed? anything on the chat or raise hand i'm waiting i see we have approach to the podium oh <coughs> all right if you'll give your full name for folks please dave haskins with the b square bulletin um this is a question that i asked clerk brown before the meeting and i just thought uh this is a chance for a journalist to um work transparently um i asked her a question about the expenses for the election um because the uh, Bloomington City Council has a year-end appropriation, and the city has a dollar amount uh, for the city's share of the cost. And it's a, it's a big enough sum, over a half million dollars, that it made me wonder, um, did MCCSC uh, have to pay something? I think they're supposed to, and I was curious to know the dollar amount. And so I asked Clerk Brown if that would be the subject of this meeting, and she indicated that it would not be because that those numbers are not yet available, but they would be. And so that is why I'm standing here saying the thing that I already said to Clerk Brown, but I figured other folks might like to know. Thanks. And if, if I may just respond um, for just a moment, I had asked after the election that people who were interested in the cost, and, and we certainly want to be cognizant of, of the cost, people have asked, that you give me 30 days to get all of the bills in uh, we use a number of vendors and, you know, we want to get those bills in so that we can give you an ac accurate portrayal. It was more important to me, quite frankly, to make sure that our poll workers got paid in a timely manner. I wanted them um, to have the money that they worked for so hard for on election day. If they wanted to put something special on their Thanksgiving table, we were trying to get that payroll out and we were able to successfully get that done. So now it is about 30 days today being December 7th, exactly 30 days since the election. So uh, we can turn our focus to getting those numbers uh, published for the expenses for putting on the municipal. I'm hopeful to have made that make sense. Thank you. Thank you, Clerk Brown. Um, there's a question in the chat. If TSD could scroll up a little so I can read, um, there's a comment in the chat. Yeah, I can't see the. Uh, Ms. Alana uh, Stonebreaker asks I believe the election board needs to approve the vote center committee meeting so that it can appear on the county government calendar. Does that happen now or later in this belief? Now or later in the meeting, I mean, asks Alana. Um, I, can we get some? Clarity, Kylie, do you have a comment or question? So today they will be deciding on what their schedule will be. And once they decide on that schedule, then I can bring to you guys more than likely at the next meeting when they will be meeting. So then that can be voted on. Uh, it, I, we may be moving into our next section. Ms. Uh, or Clerk Brown, was that a, a bullet point of concern for you today? Or that, is it was, separate? that was a separate okay. bullet um, point. Ms. Bankard, do you have a a comment on that particular so is she asking does she need to have approval to meet tonight as, as um, i'm not sure we published me. notification of tonight's yeah. uh, miss turner king did you want to add in there yeah i think what she's referring to is the uh, vote center committee meeting is not listed on the county website um the election board committee does not or the election board does not have to approve it to be on the um votes or on the county website but i did email kylie instructions on how to get it on the website so i think she, if kylie just makes contact with tsd they can get it on the website and the election board doesn't have to take action to do that so just to clarify for the room and on cats and the question for lana if she didn't hear it in the in the room is that according to our legal uh 
Care County legal. Uh, there's not a requirement to approve tonight's meeting to have it put on the calendar. It's an administrative task, and it sounds like Kylie has direction on how to do the administrative task. Is that correct? So the notice of the meeting and the agenda for the meeting are both on the website, but I believe what she is asking is for on the calendar. And yeah. I was instructed within our office that it has to be approved. Okay. So well, I we can, can easily make get a back motion. and check on that. That's fine. I mean, just to, just to double down one way or another. Correct. Uh, I'll take a motion to approve the meeting of the Vote Center Study Committee uh, for, the, for the tonight, December 7th, 2023 at 5, for the purposes of whatever public notice we have to make uh, in digital and, and print spaces. I will make that motion. Is there a second? Second. All right. All those in favor? Uh, actually, Kylie, will you take a roll on it? Um, Nicole Brown? Yes. David Henry? Yes. Judith Bankart? Yes. Well, it's so, so approved, uh, whether it needs to be or not. Uh, <laughs> 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 it, it is done. All right, uh, next is the Vote Center Study Committee update. Um, I, I think we started to talk about that, that finally uh, we are uh, having our first meeting of this uh, group uh, as we've worked very diligently to bring together a good a group of uh, bipartisan and nonpartisan partners to start working through the process of uh, uh, the next step in the, in the multi-step process of uh, looking at vote center options for our county. Um, are there any additional activities around that that we need to discuss today? Clerk yes. Brown. Yes, sir. I um, would like, <laughs> it's been no secret that I had struggles coming up with one final um, member that I wanted to nominate to the Vote Center Study Committee, but talk about saving the best for last. I would like to nominate to the election board Ms. Ami Gandhi to the Vote Center Study Committee. Um, I received uh, information of her interest and she very kindly, we, we had a meeting at my office, I believe she would be a quality independent member for the Vote Center Study Committee. Um, she is here today if she would like to speak for herself, but I'd like to take a moment to read you her bio. Ami Gandhi lives in Monroe County, Indiana, and leads the Midwest Voting Rights Program at the nonpartisan organization Chicago Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights. She works to reduce barriers to voting and improve civic participation, especially in communities of color and low-income communities in the Midwest. Her experience includes leading statewide election protection efforts, litigating cases in Illinois and Indiana, and partnering with communities to write and pass legislation. She serves on the boards of Count US Indiana, Common Cause Indiana, and Indiana Justice Project. And um, on a professional note, many times when I am at the State House testifying on behalf of the Clerks Association, Ms. Gandhi is there as well um, with issues with respect to election legislation. Well, thank you. Um, we do have public comment space. Uh, Ms. Gandhi, if you'd like to make any statement or, or comment to us, okay. thank you. Thank you for your kindness in allowing me that. I'll keep it brief. I greatly appreciate the chance to be involved for the discussion of this important topic. And because Indiana is my home state, any time that we together are considering improvements to our voting system, I will cheer that. And so look forward to learning more and being in conversation with those who are working hard to make our elections improved. I appreciate the study committee's openness to racial equity considerations when it comes to considering the possibility of a vote center model because to just put it really plainly, different voters have different experiences when it comes to interfacing with our election system. And voters have insisted time and time again that they want and we want more options for ways we can be involved in our election system. And this is a very timely opportunity to increase voting options and opportunities for civic participation instead of going in the opposite trend. So I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. I, I realize you may not at this stage, but look forward to staying in conversation with you all. Thank you for your uh, introduction and comment. Uh, does the board have any questions of Ms. Gandhi at this time? I do not. I do not. Uh, neither do I. Uh, 
I, I think you'd be a welcome addition. Uh, I, I, we, I know uh, Clerk Brown has worked diligently over the past six months to find, a, a, under a very tight mandate, the, the kinds of nonpartisan non type voices we need to help guide this conversation among a partisan constituency with our Republican and Democratic appointees. And so I, I, I welcome your, um, your, uh, your, your expertise at the table, though it, it does start tonight, <laughs> as we talked about. So I, I, we'll hopefully get you in tonight, uh, if not uh, later. But I'll go ahead and entertain a motion to make the appointment of uh, uh, Ms. Ami Gandhi to the Vote Center, Center Study Committee. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second having been made. Uh, Kylie, please call the roll. Nicole Brown. Yes. David Henry. Yes. Judith Benkart. Yes. A full deck. Thank you so much. Thank and yeah, you. we have an actual committee now. It's great. A full, full on committee. So um, good. Are there any other uh, public comment related to the Vote Center Study Committee at this time? Hey, uh, Dave Askins with the B Square Bulletin. Could someone say again, uh, but very slowly this time, the time and the place of the meeting tonight? And if it's also possible, some indication of where on the county's website uh, the information for the Vote Center Study Committee is going to be posted. I understand that from today's action, there's no doubt it will eventually uh, be posted on the calendar, which is great. Um, but uh, where is there a separate page for this committee uh, or some other place uh, that we can look? Well, multiple questions there. I'll take Thanks. a shot at the first one because I need to practice this. <laughs> Tonight's Vote Center Study Committee will meet on uh, today, December 7th, 2023 at 5 p.m. here in the Nat U Hill Courthouse or the courtroom here in the Nat U, uh, in the courthouse here uh, in in Monroe County. So that's where we're going to be, Dave. In terms of the administrative updates or documentation, I, I would defer to Clerk Brown on how we'll go about so, that. So um, again, thank you to my great staff over at Election Central. The meeting was posted. I don't know, and, and in fact, this is, it is on there. I added it myself a week ago. So it was posted, I'm not sure. And I assume it was posted in the same way our meeting is. So I'm not understanding why people are not finding it if if they looked to the same place that they that we always have How, uh, however as a point of clarity uh, it is Kylie, posted it, it, um in the same location as the election board meetings are and then it's just titled vote center committee meeting okay so this is these are these documents are being loaded to the county's document drive uh, that's publicly they, available yes. on the website they are um, there um okay. and then the they document. will be added to the calendar okay. more than likely after this meeting so for the time being that's where those documents are if there's going to be a change or an amendment or additional websites the, the board will raise that um uh up at, at if and when they adopt or we adopt other technologies to post and i i knew that we had at least discussed it because i spoke with kylie about um, I don't, you weren't on the board at that time, but I believe the election board was able to use the same Zoom hyperlink every time we met by Zoom during the worst part of the pandemic. And so we were talking about seeing if that was an option for the vote center study committee so that if someone didn't have the agenda but knew there was a meeting and they had an old one that they could click on that hyperlink um, you know, to make sure that they were a part of it. Okay. Seeing no further public comment on the Vote Center Study Committee or online, I will now uh, move to new business. Uh, do we have new business before the board today? We do. I am going to hold up, made by my office, ready for you, anybody thinking about running for office, the 2024 candidate packet. This is something that my office has made up prior to my administration. So uh, it makes it easier, lets you know deadlines and things. It is not something that we have to do. So if you stop in Election Central, please thank my staff, they're amazing. Uh, but something that just kind of is a guideline, uh, it has the election calendar, it has the forms, the candidacy forms, the CFA forms, please don't be late. Thank you for running. Uh, the information for the Indiana election staff and um, a pamphlet about political signs and disclaimer requirements for political literature. So these are available in at Election Central, but there you go. Deadlines on the back. 
who's looking out for you as candidates. Thank you so much. Thank you, Clerk Brown. Um, are they, is it a different color this year? No, sir, I believe green. it's always been green. Always green. The color of money that candidates are trying to raise as they run for office. Okay, I didn't know there if there was a, a symbolism. Fair, fair enough. Um, are, are there any other new business items from Clerk Brown? I have no new business. Uh, Ms. Benkart, do you have any new business you'd like to raise today? No. Okay. Uh, from the, the Democratic representative seat, I do have uh, two announcements I'd like to make. First is that we accepted the resignation of our poll uh, recruiter uh, for uh, our elections, uh, Orion Saft. Or Orion has, uh, I believe, had three election cycles at least under his belt. I know he'd been doing quite a few more before I got involved, but the, the work of the poll recruiter is uh, you know, difficult to make sure we have all that staff for election day. And uh, the work begins a few months before each um, cycle, primary in general. And so the party will and the North County Democratic Party will be looking to uh, fill Orion's space. I just want to thank publicly uh, for folks that uh, his work uh, on behalf of the party and really the county to make sure that those poll sites have staff and are, of course, open. It is a, a huge uh, effort, uh, but very rewarding because uh, you get to see the outcome of that work. It's uh, you know, functioning elections with uh, well-found people uh, that have supported our elections. So I will have a... Um, Appointee to uh, Clerk Brown's office for, from the party for consideration. And I again want to thank our county commissioners, our clerk's office, and county council for funding a position like that here. I, that is not always common around the state, to my understanding. Uh, so that we have that, that poll recruiter position uh, filled. So that will be Orion um, uh, uh, finding a successor for him in the coming month. Uh, secondly, will be another shift in the uh, uh, board here as well as I will be stepping down from the board uh, by the end of the year. Um, and uh, as, of course, the Democratic Party chair will fall to me to find a new uh, Democratic representative for our election board uh, as um, I'll, I'll be uh, stepping off the board by the end of the year, as I said there. Um, this has been a really challenging and interesting year. Um, I did not expect to be sitting in this chair uh, this time last year, uh, but found myself in it uh, and, and wanting to stay on every month because there's so many interesting things that go on in this space as we work through our elections. Uh, this board in two different iterations with Donovan Garlitz before uh, Judith um, had recounts on its plate. We had a question of residency on our plate. Uh, we had um, uh, we had uh, caucuses we had to take a look at, and we had a lot of legal questions. I know from the state election division, uh, yeah, I think we put them through the ringer at least. Um, and so I, 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 I thank you all for your professionalism during all of that. It's, it was really uh, an education and uh, you know, a trial by fire in some ways. But we got through a lot, and of course that's to the Clerk Brown's uh, leadership as well, and, uh, and Judge Benkart having you here too. Thanks for being good partners over the past year. Um, having said that, the reason why I'm resigning is you cannot preside over an election in which you're participating in, and I intend to file for the uh, open county council seat at large here in Monroe County, uh, and so I'll be a candidate on the other side of this uh, uh, desk at some point, um, filing CFAs on time, Clerk Brown, Thank you. <laughs> and making sure you get that done. So I look forward to uh, continuing to work with all of you in a very different capacity, but we will have a Democratic representative appointed here in the next 30 days. That's my intent. So. With that, that concludes my uh, new business announcements. Are there, is there any public comment at this time? Well, before we go to public comment, I wanna thank you for your service. You have been very kind. You are very knowledgeable. Um, your service has been unparalleled for which I bow in gratitude. Um, it's, it's a pleasure working with you and uh, I certainly wish you well going forward. Thanks. Nicole, thanks to Brown. I appreciate it. I can't say anything more than that. I think you have been very easy to work with, and I've found you to be straightforward and honest, and I definitely appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. I appreciate it. No other business before the board at this time. Uh, the chair will entertain a motion to adjourn to 1-4-2024, our next meeting. Is there a motion to adjourn? I will make a motion to adjourn. Second? Second. All right. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> hearing none, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much, everybody.